Well, the big difference with Henrik Lundqvist, number one, is when he arrived to the NHL, he took the league by storm. Seven straight 30-win season. And if it wasn't for the shortened season with the lockout in 2012-2013, he could have had 12 straight 30-win season. He went 11 for 12 in his first 12 seasons. So that doesn't happen too often. But more importantly for me, it's the style. When Henrik Lundqvist en entered the NHL in 2005-2006, we saw a lot of puck blocking uh, goalies, right? The, the butterfly, the blocks, using your body. I played like that. Patrick Waugh, Eddie Belfort, they moved to that style later in their career. Jean-Sebastien Giguere was like that. But then all of a sudden, there's this Swede that has got cat-like reflexes that plays deep. That's more of a re reactionary type goaltender that is so fast laterally that competes to such a high level that everybody had to pay attention. Right? Those type of European goaltenders always came in from the big international ice surface so they could play a little deeper, but it never really translated to the NHL type game. But Henrik Lundqvist changed that narrative. And we see a lot of goaltenders now playing deeper in their crease, really more on positioning than depth and really having a lot of success. And it all started with Lundqvist. But Lundqvist was a Vesna Trophy winner, four other times was a, vi a finalist. He was a first uh, all-star, one-time first league all-star, one time he was a second league all-star uh, he was a, a finalist for the heart and the Ted Lindsay like he really elevated himself in so many individual categories that his play just spoke for itself and obviously um, you don't get in the Hall of Fame because of the way you practice but I got a chance to practice with Henrik Lundqvist and there's nobody that works harder that competes harder and that hates to lose more than Henrik Lundqvist. That was the drive that made him different. And that is why I believe Henrik Lundqvist will get his call for the Hall of Fame.